Okay. All right. So today uh, we will be discussing a new topic. Okay. So in the last class, we talk about sales and advertising. Okay, sales and advertising. The only the main difference is that when we talk about sales and advertising within media industry, we're not really trying to sell our product. We're really trying to sell space or time to the advertisers. Okay, we because we get most of our income through advertisements. Okay, if you are talking about other types of businesses, when we talk about sales and advertising, they are trying to advertise their product. Okay, but for media industries, okay, what they are trying to sell is their space, okay, or their airtime to the advertise advertisers. Okay, but although we uh we get most of our income from advertisements, okay, audiences are also very important because we do get income from audiences, and at the same time, okay, what advertisers want is access to the audiences. Okay, this is what they want from us. They want people who will be exposed to their product and will buy their product. Okay. So today, this is what we're going to discuss. Okay. We're going to talk about promotion. Hold on. Okay. Can you see? Promotion and audience feedback. Okay, so this is very important component in the media industry and it relates to what we studied last class. Okay, last class is that we want to get the advertisers. But now we also need to get all audiences. Why do we need audiences? Okay, so that we can attract advertise, advertisers. Okay, so that is why, okay, when we do uh, audience, okay, we need to promote, okay, whatever pro. pro media content that we have, okay, a new song or a film or a TV program, we need to sell them. So we use promo, promotion. We don't use the term advertisement because we advertise, okay. So this is something that is unique to the media industry, okay, the term advertisement or advertising. Advertising in the media industry is to get, okay, advertise, advertisers, okay. So when we want to market our program to the audiences, we use the term promotion. Okay, that means what film industries, they need to promote their film, okay, to get people to watch. Okay, TV channels, TV networks, they need to promote their TV programs. Okay, so that more audiences will come. The more audiences they have, okay, it's easier for them to attract advertise, advertisers. Okay. So how do most, okay, common, the common ways of trying to promote media content, okay? It could be a TV program, it could be a new song, a new film, a new book, any media content, okay? How do they attract audiences, okay? They are mostly through promotion, but also through publicity and public relations, okay? So, there are three ways used by the media industry. The first is promotion. Promotion is like marketing. Okay, they sell, okay, they try to promote the program. Okay, for example, trying to promote a TV, a new TV series. Okay, how will they promote? They just like an advertiser, they too have to buy a airtime from a particular media net, network. Okay, can you understand? For example, okay, Upin Ipin. Okay, just say Upin Ipin has a new film and they need to promote. So they need to promote it on the radio. They need to promote it in the newspaper because they want people to come and watch. So usually they will buy spots. Okay, that means okay, the producer of Upin Ipin will pay, for example, TV3, will pay Astro for a 30 second spots. It means sports is just like advertis advertisement. Can you understand? Okay, just like advertisement. But here, when we talk about selling media products to audiences, we call them spots. Okay? So usually, okay, if there's a new, for example, Taylor Swift have a new album and she wants to promote it here in Malaysia. So she wants to buy a 30-second spots on Kids FM. 
So Hits FM will promote her radio for 30 seconds. But me, Taylor Swift will have to pay. Okay, her company, her producer, I don't know. Somebody has to pay Hits FM for them to play a spot. Okay. On the other hand, sometimes they use, okay, they buy time, okay, by promoting through tra trailers. Uh, this is very familiar to all of you, right? Trailers, okay, sometimes that's what we do in our free time, just watch trailers. Okay, so trailers usually is the film industry, but nowadays, because of the easy access to audiences, okay, even TV series also have trailers, isn't it? Right, any new content that's coming on Netflix will have a trailer. Okay, and if before trailer, what is that word they call it? Mm, shorter than trailer? Who knows? What's it called? Sure. Pardon? Sneak peek. Sneak peek, teaser? yes. There's a, there's a word for it. Teaser, teaser. Teaser, teaser yes. Yeah, a shorter vers version of a trailer. Okay, teaser. Sometimes the film is not even produced yet, but they already have the teasers. And now you can see music videos also have teaser. All right, music videos have te teaser. Student assignments also got teaser nowadays. Isn't it, right? 10 seconds, because it's so easily pro produced. That is a promo, promotion. Right, teasers, isn't it? Okay. Teasers, trailers, uh, so all of this what? To create the hypes so that people will go consume the media content. Okay? And sometimes, okay, they also have snipes. Snipes means they buy a space, okay, or a, a, what we call it, um, a time, okay, within, a part, within another content. For example, here, you see this is probably they're having news. Okay? But American Idol is promote, promoting itself down here. So that means American Idol paid this pro program to help promote. Can you follow so far? What we mean by sports, trailers and snipes? Yeah. You know, sometimes you're, you're watching Astro, right? And suddenly Upi Iping come up from another, from at the bottom of the TV. Okay? But you're watching something else. It's because Upi Iping has paid, okay, for the particular space. Snipes. And follow, all right. But if you realize, okay, sports trailers, snipes. If we relate it to the other chapters when we studied the media industry, usually, okay, big networks they are at the advantage because they don't have to pay other channels or other networks because they already own. For example, okay, American Idol shares the same network with this particular news. So they don't have to pay, they just help each other out. Can you follow? That is why on Astro, you see Upin Ipin being advertised in another channel. Why? Because they are all under one family. Because Astro is also showing Upin Ipin. Okay, to make people watch it on Astro, they promote it on another chat, another channel that is also owned by them. Okay, promo, promotion. So promotion is direct, okay, straightforward. You buy a space or you buy a certain timing in a particular media card content. On the other hand, okay, to promote, okay, to attract audiences, okay, it's not just via promotion but also via publicity. Now, publicity is less direct than promotion because it is not paid. Okay, what does this mean? It means, okay, a particular media film producer, for example, Okay, must create some interest, okay, must make the media be interested in their content so that the media will cover. For example, okay, they can release a press release, okay, telling, oh, my film is going to be aired next month. And they share this press release to the newspapers or to the media companies. And the media companies will say, okay, lah, we will do a write-up about your film. Okay, or we want to interview the actors and actresses. So when these actors and actresses are being interviewed, okay, talking about the film, it is called publicity. Publicity. Can you see? All right? Promotion, publicity. Okay? <clears throat> so that's why you see usually media companies or celebrities, they are publicity crazy. Okay? They would do crazy things. Okay? Why? Only to get publicity. Okay? 
if you watch programs like reality TV, okay, the Kardashians especially, okay, they will try to do anything to get people's atten attention. Why? Because it's for publicity. Publicity is free, you understand? Okay, just like, okay, what else? Ah, Sajat. Who's a fan of Sajat here? You know Sajat? Ah, Khadija, you don't know Sajat? You can Google. All right? So you have a figure like her, or like him. Her or him? Huh? <laughs> okay. Him, him, her. <laughs> okay, ah, Khadija, you Google the name Sajat. How to spell? S-A-J-A-T. Muhammad Faiz say he's both. How do you know both, Faiz? Ah, you check already? He declared that he's both. Ah, he's both, huh? Okay, but then he doesn't act like both. He just acts. Okay lah, not getting into that. But point is, okay, he, he, she, he, she does a lot of crazy things. Okay, and most of it people don't like. But even though people don't like, people still go to his or her Instagram page and his or her followers goes up and up. So this is what? Publicity. Publicity. Okay, he still gets the atten attention. That's why they say no such thing as bad publicity. Okay, all publicity is good publicity. That's what some people claim. Okay, and because you create the in, create the interest. Right, and another way is through public relations or uh, PR. Some of you are specializing in strategic comm, okay, doing PR. Okay, what is PR? PR is actually not just focused on the particular audiences, but, but also focused on all stakeholders. Okay, that means okay, when um, a company releases a film, okay, they don't just try to show that the film is going to attract audiences, it, they also sometimes try to show or that the film can benefit, for example, uh, what uh, can benefit a certain community, a certain society, okay, that this film talks about a particular issue, okay. So they you do this via PSAs and CSRs. You know PSAs, Public Service Announcements. Okay, sometimes you hear on the radio, right, some celebrity will do a PSA. Okay, okay, they talk about, do you know smoking is bad for you? I am Fazura. Okay, so this message is brought to you by our new film, blah, blah, and blah, blah. Have you heard about something like that? Okay, so it's PS, PSAs. So this PSAs that you can see here, it is not direct promotion. Okay. It is something to show, okay, that the, the company, the media industry, the particular film or artist is trying to, go, to do good, okay, to create a good image. So this, as a result, okay, is not going to benefit only in relation to the uh, particular film, but going to benefit the reputation of the celebrity, the reputation of the film company, okay. And sometimes they do CSR. Corporate social responsibilities. Okay, maybe you have heard, okay, the cast of the Avengers will be at Hospital Selayang today. Can you understand? All right. So they try to promote goodwill. Okay. So here to make you understand better. Promotion uh, of Iron Man. You focused on drawing attention to the product. That means they focus on drawing attention to the fee, film, okay, through placements and imagery. Placements here means what? On television, on radio, in the newspapers, everywhere you see, you see the post, poster. And they say, coming to a cinema near you, okay, July 20th. Uh, so that means what? It's directly trying to tell you, go watch the movie, watch the movie. Okay, and it focuses on imagery. That means there's the trailers, posters. Can you understand? Okay. And this is paid media. That means the producer of Iron Man paid for that poster to be aired on television, to be put on the billboards. Can you follow? And their main target are the audience, audiences. Okay. 
On the other hand, publicity is focused on spreading information, news and communications related to the product. Okay, so instead of saying come now, they say read, okay. Oh, this is an interview with Robert Downey Jr. Okay, on the cover of Vogue magazine is Gwyneth Paltrow talking about her new film. Okay, Becoming Pepper Potts. Okay, so here is what? Can you see the difference? It's not really direct sell, direct selling. It is called earned media, sometimes paid media. What do we mean by earned? That means, okay, the film has created some kind of interest that the media gives the attention. Can you follow? The media offers a space. Newspaper offers the space. Magazine, okay? Facebook, okay? okay? Vloggers will in invite them into their space to talk about the film. So that is publicity. publicity. Originally, publicity is earned. But some can be paid. Uh, but paid publicity sometimes have ethical issues. Okay, paid, for example, the media, okay, the uh, Marvel, for example, paid the, a certain journalist, okay, to write a lot about his or her feet, her feeling. Can you follow all right? Okay, so here, the focus is still on the audience, audiences. Madam, I just would like to ask, uh, if we ask the journalists, to write down our stories like is it ethical okay of course um, uh, it's no problem okay usually within the media industry also you use networking right okay you know the journalist it's good to know journalists to help you co cover but it becomes questionable questionable when you pay okay when you pay the journalists and then the journalists will feature your film Okay, and when he or she continuously feature your film, he or she compromises another film. Can you get what I'm saying? All right, okay. It's okay. Of course, media companies sometimes what they do also, they send journalists gifts. They, they give journalists uh, what we call it special uh, showing. Uh, sometimes, okay, journalists also get the opportunity to dine, you know, to eat lunch with the celebrities. You've seen that before, right? Right? When, uh, when uh, for example, uh, Robert Downey comes to Malaysia. Okay? So journalists will get a first-hand look at his film. Or will, have, will be able to have a face-to-face -face interaction with him. They do a press release, a press conference. All of this, okay, is part of public publicity. Okay? So publicity can be intentional or unintentional. Intentional. But usually it is earned. That means, okay, when, uh, what we call it, Robert Downey comes here and gives a press conference, although the journalists are not being paid to come, they will come. Why? Because it's Robert Downey Jr. The film is Iron Man, Marvel, so they, they have the earned reputation that when the journalist covers the story, the journalist also will benefit because well, people will read more. Okay? But if nobody, suddenly nobody, a nobody, a new actor or a new producer call for a public, uh, of a press conference. So usually the journalists would not be interest, interested. Okay. So you, okay, so this is what we mean publicity. But sometimes, okay, media industries, okay, there are, for example, certain unethical ways, okay, like uh, asking paparazzi to cover about celebrities. That has been used as a publicity. That's why you see in Hollywood, all right? Okay, ideal cannot hear that well. Never mind, ideal. Okay, we will. I will share the video later on on YouTube. Okay, you know when you read, okay, how Hollywood actresses are always being followed. Okay, but they don't sue the paparazzi. Why? Because they still need the paparazzi to for publicity. Publicity. That means the more they are on the tabloids, okay, the more relevant they still are. Can you understand what I'm saying? All right. So that's why at one point, remember that vampire film, um, Twilight. Okay. Some argue that the main actors and actresses were just, you know, it's just a publicity stunt. 
Okay, what's her name? Robert Pattinson and Kirsten Stewart, right? Okay, they were supposed to be a couple during the film. So some are say probably this is just publicity stunt. So that people become more interested, right? Their favorite couple on screen is also a couple off screen. And then when they are a couple, then the paparazzis and the, the journalists will all go after them. So they will become very popular at that time. And this will relate to their fi film. More people will be interested to watch the film, to watch the film. So the film finish, they also finish. Okay, publicity, publicity. And the third way is via public relay, public relation. Okay, they don't, so this is not direct selling, okay, public relation because they focus on creating favorable public image through relationship building. And this is mostly for long term. Okay, you can see here, for example, here through this image, Iron Man is visiting okay, sick kids at the hospital. Okay, so when they visit these sick kids at the hospitals, okay, again, all right, it's not niat ikhlas, tak ikhlas, it's don't know lah, okay, but this is a method, all right. The method is, yes, they are helping young kids, okay, they're giving out, okay, good public image, okay, Iron Man give free service, uh, so all of this what? It creates good e, good image. Can you understand? All right? Through relationship building. And here it's not only to the audiences, to all stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? Probably parents, they don't watch the movie, but they've read, okay, oh, Marvel have very good characters. They always volunteer at the hospital. Okay lah, I will let my children watch these movies. Can you understand? So, stakeholders, stakeholders, more than just audiences. Okay? So, these are among the ways how media industry attract audiences. Okay? Our focus in this class today is all audiences. So, that people come and consume their product. So why do we need audiences? Because no audiences, no advertisers. No advertisers, no pro, no profit. Okay? And it's also important for the media company to get feedback from the audiences. First, you promote, right? You try to get the, get the audiences to come and consume the content. And then you must retain their interest. So how to retain, to make sure that the audiences stay, that the audiences remain interested? You must get feedback. You must ask and you must uh, do some kind of investigation to identify okay, how the audiences feel about your media product. So how do they get this uh, feedback? Sometimes, okay, traditionally, fan mail. Okay, we see how audiences respond. Okay, if audiences actually took the time to write about you and they write good things about you, okay, that means you're doing very well. But if they actually take the time to complain, that means you're doing really bad. Okay, so you need to improve and see what is it they like and they don't like. Okay, fan mail. So who gets fan mail? Films get fan mail. Musicians get fan, fan mail, right? Okay. And sometimes it's more than just fan mail. You get fan fiction. You know about fan fiction, right? Okay, when fans extend the content. Okay, when fans keep the content alive by creating their own. Okay. So if you want to know, okay, uh, responses, audience feedback. So that is why, okay, we've discussed before this, why um, celebrities or singers, for example, they don't, they hardly sue people who cover their songs on YouTube. Okay? Be because the more people cover your song is an indication that your song is doing well. That is a good audience feed, audience feedback. Okay, and the internet today is okay, so much easier for companies to get audience feedback. So that's why all media content okay, is very reliant on social media. Any new film will have its own Facebook page, own Instagram page. 
Okay? We're not talking about a live person. We're talking about a film or a book will have its own social media plat platforms. Okay? Why do they need social media platforms? So that their audiences can connect and communicate with one another. And when you have a social media platform, you can keep the interest alive. Even though the film is no longer running in the cinemas, for example, fans of the film can continue to communicate. Okay? And can continue to make the film rele relevant. Okay? So, internet is very important, okay? It allows also for fan-generated con content that we mentioned just now, okay? Fan mails, uh, YouTube covers, okay? Even YouTube, uh, what you call it? Um, where you recreate a particular film or drama but in a funny way. What's the term you use? Um, is it parody? Parody. Yes, parody, okay? All of those are rest. Responses, okay? Samples of feedbacks, okay? And sometimes, okay, um, you can get, okay, unwitting feedback. That means feedback that was not intended, okay? Feedback uh, that comes, uh, it's not really the traditional way. Uh, for example, okay, this is a very uh, controversial response to the film Batman. Uh, Batman, what is it? The one where the bad person is bald. <laughs> it's very hard, okay? I'm forgetting a lot of things. Must be my age, okay? The Batman film. What is it called? Can you help me name Batman films? Hold on, now I Google. Batman, the one with Christian Bale. Batman... The night, Dark Knight Rises, uh, that's the one. Okay, my brain worked faster than Google. I remember now. Okay, Batman Dark Knight Rises. So the film was quite, um, what we call it, not that violent, lah, typical violence. But, okay, some people found it very uh, violent that there was in one of the incidents, the cinema, okay, it, although there's no direct relationship, okay, but, okay, there there was some mass shooting, you know, mass shooting that happened during the, when the film was being aired. Okay. So because of this incident, okay, the movie got somewhat like a negative repute, reputation. Can you understand what I'm saying? Okay. It's not that the movie promoted violence for everyone, but there was this one incident during the screening of the film. Okay. One of the audiences shot. Okay. Okay. Made some kind of a mass shooting. So this created unwitting feedback. That means feedback that they don't want, feedback they don't realize. And the feedback is that now less people went to watch the film, watch the film because of the fear that incident create, created. Can you follow? So unwitting here is like unpredictable, unpredictable. Many things can give feedback to the uh, producers. But all of this feedback must be taken serious, seriously. But the most soft, systematic way to get audience feedback is to do re research. So that's why in communication and media, you need to do research. Even if you're doing public relation or you're doing, okay, media journalism, research is very impo important. Because media companies will usually pay, okay, researchers, okay, to get, to understand audience feed, feedback. Okay. So here are examples of research companies that do audience feedback. Okay, I'm sure you've heard of Nielsen. Okay, or it used to be AC Nielsen. Okay, and then there's Arbitron. But nowadays, Arbitron is no longer uh, that prominent. Okay, it's becoming small because it cannot compete with Nielsen. And then there's ABC. ABC stands for Audit Bureau Circulation. This is specific for pub, uh, what? published publications. Okay, printed me, printed media. So ABC, what does it do? It 
counts okay the number of sales for publication it keeps track which newspaper is the number one newspaper in malaysia okay how do they know because they keep track it's their job to me measure how do they measure uh, of course through systematic re systematic research nielsen it mostly does for broadcast me broadcast media okay nielsen does the research and nielsen tells tv3 you are the number one channel in malaysia how did nielsen do that because they went down to the uh, what we call it um field and do the research how do they do research they sample the popular population did they actually go down and ask people which channel you watch they do that okay madam um like do they been apa tu apa tu paid ah uh, yeah do they been paid by like tv3 yes. to do the research definitely being paid a lot of money okay so research companies are very important because they can give the data to the media company to help media company sell their products research can tell tv3 what kind of audiences they have research can tell tv3 what kind of programs audiences want research can help tv3 to attract advertise advertisers okay <clears throat> So, but this is not a research class. Good for you, lucky you. So we're just going to be very talking about it very just broadly, talking about why media companies need re need research. Okay. <clears throat> so how do they identify what we watch, what we listen to, when or where we watch a particular program? They do the research by sam sampling. Okay, you know what sampling is, right? Where you select a group of people to start to study. Okay, you know Nielsen, they pay. Okay, later on, if you don't have any money, for example, you want to make some income, you find out is Nielsen paying and or looking for samples? <clears throat> Because Nielsen will pay individuals to record down their media habits. Okay. But nowadays media habits okay because you are watching so many things at one time okay and you're watching things staggeredly you don't watch it at one particular moment you're watching tv 24 hours a day so it's hard for you because traditionally what they would do is they ask the samples to write a diary okay today from 5 to 7 okay i watch the chinese drama okay 8 to 10 i watch the uh news but of course nowadays okay media habits is not straightforward anymore so most of research companies they use ppm portable people meter like this one so it's a device that you wear okay so when you are being paid by nielsen to sample your media habits you need to wear this at all times so Niels, this product, okay, this machine, this portable people meter can capture the waves and identify what program you are watching. Okay, and your head, your habits. So far, all right? Okay. So here, then... Uh, what are the kinds of data or information media company wants? Okay, usually they want numbers. Okay, so when a company, okay, a media company, they advertise, okay, they usually take a spot. We've already discussed just now, right? Spot. That means, okay, a media spot. Now, if we want to see how powerful or how effective a spot is, that means, okay, I want to know how popular my TV program is. Okay, these are the things that I need to consider. Before, <clears throat> a spot is a single broadcast of an advertisement or it could be also a single broadcast of a program. Okay, and then we want to know how it is being received by the media market. 
media market describes the set of people that could potentially be exposed to your advertisement or your pro program. Okay, so when we pay for a spot, we want to know how it reaches the media ma market. Okay, <clears throat> so media market, who will specify? Okay, the media companies and the researchers will specify. Okay, if it's a Malay comp Malay drama series on RTM, okay, the media market will probably be okay, semi-urban or rural areas. And the market will most probably be the Malays whose age are 18 and above with a particular income of what and what. This is what we mean by sampling, okay? Identifying, not sampling yet, identifying who would probably be watching your pro program. So the population will be the total number of people in your media market that you target just now. Okay, probably according to the characteristics just now, ur semi-urban, rural, Malays, okay, age 24 and above or living, okay, or only speaks in Bahasa, uh, probably there are 2 million of them in Malaysia. Can you understand? Okay, now. What we want to know based on this media market of population is the ratings. You've probably heard here before, okay, that in Malaysia, the highest rated TV program is Anugrah Juara Lagu. The highest rated radio stations is most of, is it Era FM, Hot FM? I'm not sure. Okay, one of those uh, channels, okay, are the highest rated, okay. Why are they the highest rated? Because it is a big chunk of the percentage okay, in the population are watching or listening to that. Can you understand? Okay, that means 70% of those Malays who are living based on the characteristics we've mentioned just now, they are watching Anugrah Juara Lagu. They are listening to ERA FM. Okay, on the other hand, only 50% are listening to Hot FM. So this means, okay, uh, what we call it, ERA will have the highest rated radios, will be the highest rated most popular t radio station. Can you follow so far? Okay. And then, you don't only think about rating, you also want to consider impressions. The total number of exposure to your advertisement. Okay, now, ratings just now very general. Okay, how many times, uh, how many people actually have been exposed to your pro program? Okay, but impressions is more important because it tells you, okay, how many times, okay, that those, uh, what we we'll call it, those people actually watch your program. That means if it's more than one, your impression is very high. Can you follow? Okay, if we say, for example, okay, the impressions for uh, Anugrah Juara Lagu is five. That means people actually watch it five times. So that means the program is very engaging to the audi audience. Because somebody may just watch it one time. Somebody may just watch it half of the show. But those people who watch it even for 10 minutes are already included in the rate ratings. But ratings is very general. So if you want to know how really good, how really popular a particular program or how really impactful a particular advertisement is, we look at the impre impression. Okay? If you see an advertisement once, you might forget it. But if you see it every day, okay, the advertisement, the message that comes in the advertisement will stick in your head. Isn't it? So that is impression. So successful advertisements will create good impression. Okay, all of you can see Mark Cool. You know Mark Cool advertisement? Yes. Ah, how does it go, Sada? Nanyi ke? Nanyi lah. 
<laughs> yeah, Nila, anyway, it's already raining all over Malaysia. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> It might cool. And what are the advertisements that are, uh, you know, that can leave a good impression on you? Yusuf Tayyuk. Ah, I can always, Yusuf Tayyuk, you remind me. Okay. And then what else? Apollo. Yes, that is Apollo. Okay, all of your know, generation also grow up with Apollo. Okay, all right. Or like KFC, finger licking good. Okay, Gardenia. What does Gardenia say? Dodo. Huh? The be enak dimakan begitu saja. Dono. Oh, you don't eat Gardenia. Eat nasi lemak every day. Okay. So if you can remember, that means the advertisement has created good impression. You did not listen to it once. You've listened to it many, many times. Okay. The impression reminds me to Twitter impression, like we can see how many people see our tweets. Ah uh, yes, ah uh, yes. Most of you now are very smart already because you look at your user statistics, right? Okay. YouTube will offer this. Facebook will have their own statistics, so you can basically know whether you're popular or not, right? Okay. And then reach. Uh, reach is also quite general because it is the number of people in the media market that will likely be exposed to one spot. Okay. One advertisement can reach how many people? Okay. If they say the reach is seven, that means seven people, 70% 70 of the population. Your target here will see the advertise, advertisement. So that is why advertisers will, would love to advertise during programs that are popular only. Why? Because even only you advertise one time, it can reach many, pe many people. Okay? Remember I told you about the Super Bowl? Okay, that's why advertisers are willing to pay a million dollar a second because they can reach almost the whole American popula population. Okay? Frequency is the very average number of times the advertisement will be presented to the rich population. Okay, how many times will you air the advertise? advertisements? Okay, now here, okay, all these terms are being used, okay, two ways, okay. First is through tell us how uh, what we call it effective is our promotion okay and it tells advertisers okay how effective it is to advertise on our pro uh, what we call it program but at the same time okay can you understand what i'm trying to say that here we use this data number one we use to, this data okay to help us to inform us okay about how effective is our promotional program Okay, if I am a film, okay, I advertise on Astro. So I, I want Astro, you tell me, okay, what are these ratings? What are the impressions? What are the reach? Can you follow? That is when we are the, basically like the, the advertisers. Secondly, we use this data to attract advertisers to us. When we can provide this data related to our program. Can you follow? Okay, for example, if I am a radio station, I need to tell my advertisers, oh, we are the highest rated radio stations in Malaysia. Okay, we got 70% of the population are watching us. Okay, so what? We got the numbers to show the advertise, advertisers. Okay, but another company can also use impressions. They say, yes, probably, okay, Sinar FM will say, oh, we're not as popular. Okay, our rating is only 0 0.5. Only 50% of the media market listen to us. But our impression is high. That means, okay, even within the small market, they can still listen to, watch your advertisement within in our radio station 10 times. Okay, because it doesn't mean high rating means high impression. Not necessary, not necessarily. 
So media companies can use this lah rating, impressions, reach and frequency. They can adjust. They can bundle it up. You know, write it nicely to attract advertise advertisers. Okay. And most of the time, okay, the data that research companies provide are not just quantitative data. They also provide qualitative data. Okay. They don't just tell us, okay, how many people are listening to us. Okay. If you are a radio station, okay. Are, are you MFM? Okay. When you do the research, okay, they don't just tell me who's listening to me. They're also telling me who is who is listening to me not just how many but who specifically can you follow right so it tells me about demograph demographic out of the 70 percent that uh listen to iium fm 80 percent are female 20 percent only male uh, okay where are the males they don't listen to IIUM FM, right? They listen to, they listen to what? Faiz, you listen to what? Your girlfriends. Your mother, the mother. Okay, okay, listen to their girlfriend. Okay, so I am FM to make sure more people listen. Okay, find girlfriends, right? To become the DJ. But here, okay, they can tell us who's watching. Okay, you're watching YouTube, yeah, Faiz. Okay. Who are you watching on YouTube, Faiz? Hmm? Pavitra. So here, qualitative, UAI. Hmm. Yeah, Lato. All right. Demographic characteristics. Okay. Who are watching specific details? Okay. Male or female, age group, urban or rural. Okay, so is this important? Very impo important. Why? Remember I said, you use this data to sell yourself as the media co company to the advertise advertisers. Just say you are newspapers, okay, like the star. The star, okay, is only have a circulation, if I'm not mistaken, of 300,000. They are probably the fourth or fifth most when we, we talk about rate ratings okay who has the highest rate who's the highest rated newspaper in malaysia number one number one highly circulated newspaper in malaysia which newspaper don't know don't read newspaper the star the star berita harian when you read nasi lemak usually from what newspaper they cover berita harian Berita harian become nasi lemak covers. Okay. Metro. Metro, yes. Okay. The number one, okay, newspaper at one point almost a million circulation is Harian Metro. Okay, you know Harian Metro, right? It's tabloid. Okay. Who wants to read about politics when you can read about some wives getting stolen, right? On Harian Metro. Okay. So Harian Metro is the number one newspaper in Malaysia. But, okay, the star, which is the number four or fifth, I don't even know their numbers, has the highest advertising rate. That means it's more expensive to advertise on the star. Okay, so you have a newspaper if you want to follow data, quantitative numbers and popularity. You have Harian Metro with 1 million readerships. That means it has rates, okay? You can attract 1 million people to your advertisements. On the other hand, you have this newspaper, The Star, which has only 30%, okay? 300,000 audiences. But it's more expensive to advertise on The Star, in The Star, sorry. Why do you think it's more expensive to advertise in The Star? Because the people who buy the newspaper are coming from which people? Yes, because of the demograph, demographic. Okay, so who's reading Berita Harian? Okay, probably, okay, Malay, Malay, uh, the middle and lower class Malay, uh, what we call it, uh, Malays and semi-rural and semi-urban. 
Okay, it's obviously a Malay newspaper, a Malay newspapers. So their demographic, okay, are probably those people who earn less than, for example, three thousand a month. Democrat demographic. But you have here three hundred thousand readers of the Star who are urban, English speaking, and earns probably minimum ten thousand ringgit a month. So between these two groups, which has more purchasing power? The star readers. Okay. So if you are an advertiser, you want to advertise not only to the large amount of audiences, you want to advertise to uh, audiences that can actually buy your pro, buy your product. Okay. So if you are selling products like Adidas, where do you pro promote? Where would you advertise? You probably advertise with the the star, because people who can afford will go there, right? But if you advertise jamu mak senah, okay, or you advertise okay the herbs, sendayu tinggi, where do you advertise? Where do you advertise? Harian Mail, Harian Metro, because these are audiences that would actually buy your pro, buy your product. Okay, so it's not just the quantitative data, the qualitative data is very important as well. Who are the all audiences? Okay, and then the psychographic, not just demographic, but also psychographic. Okay, what do we mean by psychographic? The way the audiences think, okay, the way or the lifestyle of the audience, audiences are also important. Okay, for example, again, okay, those who are reading the star, okay, they have more money and they are probably more ambitious, okay, and they're probably more stylish and more concerned about what people think of them. Psychograph, psychographic. So if you are going to sell an expensive perfume, okay, or an expensive makeup product, Okay, cosmetic products. It's better for you to uh, advertise with the stars, the star, because those people who read the star, they are very concerned about the products that they consume. Okay, they don't want people to know, oh, they wear sendayu tinggi lipstick. No. Okay, because their psychographic is the different. Can you follow so far? All right. Okay. So all of these are important as as well okay so if you sell for example again all right some mm, very uh, expensive okay imported product you probably don't want to advertise during a malay drama series program you would probably advertise during uh, for example a western comedy okay why because it depends on those people who watch those people who prefer to watch Western comedies obviously have a different psychography than those who likes to watch Malay, dra Malay dramas. Can you follow so far? But here we're not saying who is better. We're just saying there are different groups. And advertisers okay, wants to be targeted to audiences that will buy their pro product. Okay. And then it's also important, okay, that it's not just we consider the demographic and psychographic. We want to see what is the outcome. Is there some kind of engagement? Okay. That means they don't just view the advertisements, okay. They become engaged. Once they see the advertisement, do they Google about it? Do they want to know more? Okay, that means was that advertisement so effective that it created some kind of action on behalf of the audiences. Okay. So that's why sometimes advertisements would, okay, they say, or oh, to know more, go to our Facebook, okay, or our website. Most of the time we don't do it. Unless we are really interest, interested. So if we are interested and we do more, then that means, okay, there is some kind of engage, engagement. Can understand so far? 
Okay, very simple, right? We talk about doing research. Why do we need to do research? Because we want all of this information. This information to help us promote our media content to the audiences as well as to attract advertise, advertisers. So the data will give you numbers, but the data will, give, will also give you qualitative characteristics. So all of these work together to help you sell Okay, so why do we need all this data? Okay, it helps you to sell time. This is what we mean just now, okay? For TV channels, for radio stations to sell time. For advertisers to promote on your platform. Okay, and it's also important, okay, the result of this research for us to determine the CPM and CPP. CPM is cost per milli. Remember last class we've already discussed. Okay, milli is not million, yeah? Milli is a thousand. And CPP, cost per point. So we can use, okay, when I mention we, that means us, the media company, the media industry. Okay, the radio station, TV program, film companies, that's we. Okay? Because so we can charge. If we know, oh, okay, our rate is very high, rating high, a lot of people is watching us and our engagement also very high. So we can charge very high cost per milli and cost per point. That means we can charge advertisers a lot of ma, a lot of money. Okay. And it also it tells us the health of the indus, industry. Okay, we do the research, we can know, oh, okay, nowadays, okay, the selling of music is not good anymore. People are no longer even using uh, iTunes, okay, because they prefer, okay, downloads, okay, or streaming, continuous stream, streaming. So, if we can understand the industry health, so we can make better decisions. Can you follow, okay? For example, okay, in the film industries, they always do research, okay, and the Hollywood nowadays with globalization, when they make a film, they no longer focus on the American market. We've done, discussed this before. Okay, why? Because the industry, the health of the American film market is not as good. Because people in the US are saturated, they watch all films already and they're not really excited about films anymore. Because they've got too much. So the industry health there is not good. So that is why Hollywood is changing, diverting their focus to the global market, especially China. Because the industry health in China is very good. That whatever Hollywood films that go to China will be successful. Why will it be successful? Because the Chinese are still interested. The Chinese are still excited when there's a new Hollywood film car coming. So this will help the film companies or film industry to make better decisions and strata strategies. All right, okay. And then it can also help us compare, compare our products with other people's products. Okay, why is it Era FM and Hot FM both sound similar, but one is more popular than the other? Okay. So they discover, for example, okay, at one time, okay, uh, uh, what is it? Era was more popular than Hot FM because they try, they often use celebrities as DJs. Can you follow? So when Hot discovered this, Hot also started to recruit actors, comedians to become their D DJs. Okay, so they can become more comp competitive. And then we can also tell us, data will tell us which program is popular, which one is not popular anymore. So we can decide, do we continue or not continue? Or what should we do to make this program more interest, interesting? Okay, program decisions. Do we keep this particular DJ in the morning? Okay, Johara, at one time was so popular. Okay, but not so popular now. So do we need to change the DJ? So all of this, okay, these decisions can be made based on the information provided by research. Okay, and then it can also help advertisers 
okay, to decide where to place their pro products. Okay, and of course, data also can give us new insights, new information, new information. Okay, so new information that tells uh, what we call it broadcast or radio or television. Okay, that they they definitely need to be alive on social me social media. Okay, that radio stations nowadays realize that everything must be video. Although they are radio, focusing only on music and uh, what we call it, sounds. Okay, but the input today, the world that we live in is a world of videos. Okay, so how to stay relevant? That's why all radio stations now have their own YouTube page. Isn't it? And they will upload all of their programs and they even go live on YouTube okay, and live on Facebook video streaming of their programs. Why? Because radio is now video. So all of this input you can only know if you get all this data and information through, re through research. Okay. <clears throat> okay. But what are the issues? Okay, are so many issues lah. Okay, sometimes the issue is promotion. Okay, especially now when we talk about okay media conglomeration. Okay, where big networks, like we discussed just now, it's much cheaper for them to promote their content on their different platforms. So there is usually a very imbalanced, uh, what we call it market. Okay, or imbalanced promotion of products. Those film, for example, that are produced by big networks, they will get definitely more promotion. And their promotion is free. Can you follow? Okay. And then mostly small industries cannot com compete. And promotion, publicity does not usually give you a good, re good result. Okay, sometimes the result may be uh, what not working for you. Okay, I don't remember. I remember one time ago, long time ago, probably I can't remember which year. Okay, do you know that what Jennifer Lopez, 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 ah, not Pe Lopez, ah, Jennifer Lopez. Okay, used to date Ben Affleck. You know Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck are they too old for you people? Okay. Not too old, huh? Okay, good. All right. So they used to date for, okay, this is just an example, all right? So they used to date and then they made a film together. The film is called Jersey Girls. So usually, when main at cast dates, okay, like the Twilight situation I told you just now, it's a good publicity, good publicity. But it turned out for Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck, audiences didn't like them to date and this affected the film the film so the film was a box office failure so because the film box office failure you also know what happened to them also lah okay uh, they had a nickname they were called Benifer. okay <laughs> yes that's why i say uh, in this class all right you have to like the media industry <laughs> You must watch film, okay? You must listen to the radio, okay? You, it's not a must, but better to know the gossips, okay? So you can make sense of what is going on. That is not just for, for your pleasure, but most of the time, this is a marketing strat strategy, okay? And then today, it's so hard for you to do research because it's hard to find sam samples. It's not easy to get people to participate, okay? To wear that portable people meter all the time okay and that's why okay doing during research also usually non-cooperation people don't really want to cooper cooperate okay and then there are issues with the meters because you're dealing with a gadget it can break down it can give false information okay all of these issues lah okay and then the diaries remember i told you they used to do the research via jotting down in diaries Okay, so that's really hard, okay, for people to be committed to write down. Okay, 
You all not in class, Dr. Mahazan yet, right? In Dr. Mahazan's class, usually you have to write down diaries as your assignment. Uh, many people cannot do because it's not easy to commit to write a diary every every day. Okay? And then the cost of doing research is very high. Okay, so that's why usually local and small media companies, they don't even do the research. Because they cannot pay Nielsen or other research com companies. Sometimes, okay, the interpretation of research, because uh, it's qualitative, when you talk about the psychographic of the audiences, it's really very inter based on the interpretation, all right? And this can be very vague, okay, can, give, can be quite subject, subjective. So the result might tell you something else, but other people would, would evaluate it differently, okay, and put different meaning. Okay. And then some people argue because of this market research, many companies have become too dependent, okay, on the result of this research, okay, in their program decisions, for example, okay. Any programs that do not make a particular numbers will be cancelled, okay, but they don't consider whether the program is good or not. Okay, maybe you have an educational program, okay, an educational TV series that's not so popular, okay? But even if it's not popular, it may be good, okay? It may provide alternative to the children, but all of that is not considered when the data tells you that the number is small, okay? And then the issue of democracy. That means, okay, here when we talk about democracy is access to the content, access to the me media okay so different countries different societies different communities have different access to the me media okay so research can only tells you okay data available data of usually typical groups of all audiences okay all right that's it. Very simple. Only nine slides. Okay, but I'm sure in your textbooks, okay, more than 20 pages. You can try to see. Okay. But like I said, okay, for most of the time, okay, for your assignment or quiz or exam, it will be based from the slides. Okay. The slides have highlighted all the important points. But you must read the textbook to better understand. Okay. The textbook will provide you with more exam examples and details, ex detailed explanation. Okay? All right. So I hope now all of you can become informed media practitioners. Now you can all make money already. Okay? Madam, yes? is the textbook uh, available online? No, that's why we made the illegal copies. Uh, if not, you everybody will already have the online copy. Okay, like I said, even if you don't have the textbook, if you've been following the classes and taking notes, you should be able to answer like exam or you wouldn't be lost. Okay, the textbooks just to complement. Right? Also, don't forget or pretend to forget that assignment is due on Wednesday. I will open it. You will submit via Google Classroom. Madam, that's the Com Theory one. Com Wednesday's Com Theory. Uh, next week is Madam. MP. Huh? Your assignment when do you? Next week, 32. How come I'm so nice to you? Hey, uh, this week is for Com Theory. Oh, is it? Okay, lah, okay, lah. Andai lah, you all. Okay, next week. Okay, next week. That means one extra week, better assignments. Ah, uh, madam. Yes. When you say about 4,000 words, what is the maximum? Okay, all right. Many people have come to say that they write more, okay? So you can write lah how many you want as long as it's not giving me apa nama, roundabout stories. Okay? okay. It can be it's based by facts. Okay? Noted, madam. Thank you very much. Okay, welcome very much. 
Any more questions? Okay, so no question, then assignment next. Madam, Madam, uh, for the slides, wait, uh, for the slides number, uh, for the research companies, we have Nelson, ABC. What does ABC means here? Yeah? Audit Bureau Circulation. Or, uh, again, Madam? Audit. I can type, right? Hold on. Audit Bureau. How do you spell Bureau? Something like that, lah. Circulation. Okay, I don't know how you spell Bureau, lah. Something like that, lah. Audit Bureau Circulation. Okay, there's no autocorrect on Google Meet. Okay. So this one only for printed media. Books, magazine, newspaper, newspapers, they use ABC. Okay. All right, so here the deadline already you can see here, July 22nd, July 28th, okay, video assignment. After that, final exam. All right, no questions. We end the class today with Tasbih, Kofaroh and Walos. Okay, so later I will share the link to the video, okay? Okay. All right.